So for today's video, I am doing the back in the day teacher tag. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Marieli Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. So for today's video, I am doing the back in the day teacher tag that was started by Ruth from Diary of a Mad Black Teacher, Alisa from The Emerging Educator, and Anita from Naturally Niani. I also happen to see Janice's video. She did it also on this tag. So I'll link all three videos plus Janice's video in the description box below. My friend Jennifer from Glitter and Gems also let me know about this tag. And it seems like a fun tag to try. So I said, why not? There's only 10 questions. So here we go. And if you see me looking down, I'm only referring to the paper that I printed the questions on. Number one, what grade do you currently teach? Where did you go to primary, middle, and high school is it in the same district so like I mentioned at the beginning of my video I teach fourth grade now I went to primary school in two different places I went from kindergarten to fourth grade in Puerto Rico and then my family moved to South Florida and I continued fifth grade through sixth grade which at the time was considered elementary school in the same district where I teach I also went to middle school and high school in the same district where I teach. I also went to the university in the same city where the same district is where I teach. So yeah, I kind of stayed in the same area. Number two, who were your most influential teachers or least influential teachers? So my most influential teachers are a couple of them that always come to mind. So definitely my kindergarten teacher, I still remember her as a sweet, sweet, teacher she was amazing and so loving and caring I also remember my fifth grade teacher who was the first teacher that I had when I came to live in South Florida I didn't know any English and Miss Bethune was amazing by the way my kindergarten teacher's name was Miss Morales and in fifth grade my fifth grade teacher's name was Miss Bethune I love her so much she had so much patience with me and she believed in me and I even surprised her at times especially one time that she had gone out on a meeting and there was a sub in the classroom and the sub had pulled reading groups and I was in the reading group that they had pulled and she was doing the round robin reading where she was going from student to student and they had to read what followed and I was getting anxious. I have anxiety people as well so that's something you need to know about me. I was getting anxious because I knew it was going to be my turn and I didn't want to be embarrassed by not being able to read. So I tried my best when it was my turn to read and while I was trying to read my teacher had just come in the room and she looked at me with such pride. She was so proud of me because she realized that, you know what, I was willing to do it and I was trying my best. And she was just so classy with her done up nails and her high heels. So yeah, I wish I could find her in somewhere or another. I've tried, I just haven't been successful and just tell her thank you. My sixth grade teacher was also amazing, Miss Campbell, but she did move to California, so I haven't been able to track her down. And then we get to middle school where we have Miss Woodruff, and she was amazing and so loving and caring. She was a teacher that I shared in a previous video that after she heard that my father was laid off and she saw that I was kind of sad and I was sad because maybe we wouldn't have a Christmas that year, she made me write down a list of things that I would have loved, which is I'm an artist at heart. So it was crayons and construction paper and white paper and a teddy bear and she surprised me on Christmas Eve I believe it was and she went to my house and delivered those gifts to my door I will never forget that and it's not just about the gifts it's about how she went out of her way to make relationships with us and she legitimately cared about our well-being and how I was doing and she gave me good advice and I'm sad to say that while I was in middle school, she was suffering from cancer and she did pass away my ninth grade year. Ninth grade at the time was in middle school as well. And yeah, we all got the sad news that she passed away and I will just never forget her. And I strive to be a teacher like her, worried about my students and really caring about them so that they know that I'm not just there to teach them, I'm there because I do care about them and I want whatever is best for them. And after her, I will have to say my high school English teacher, Miss Humphrey. I had her for both 11th and 12th grade, and she was amazing. The type of essays that she would have us do, the conversations we would have in class, and she also cared for us and did her best to build relationships with us as well. So these are some of the teachers that will forever be part of me 
and I want part of my teaching to reflect what they did for me so that I can do the same for my students. And my least influential teachers, I don't know if I can say least influential because they still influence me in some way as far as it goes with how not to teach <laughs> or how not to address my students. And that would be my high school physics teacher because all he did, and it's funny because Janice was saying the same thing and we had this similarity. We both said that physics was our least favorite subject and when I watched her video, she said the same thing about her physics teacher. It's just he taught in a way that it wasn't the way that I like to learn. I'm very visual and I'm very, show me how to do it and then I can try to figure it out on my own. He was mostly, all right, everybody, read these pages and do these problems. He wouldn't really specifically go over how to do the formulas and it was challenging. And then of course my high school algebra two and honors pre-calculus teacher who I just think she just didn't like me. But then it wasn't just me, it was I think almost everybody because she just yelled at everyone all the time. And I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was my get to know me tag, that the day that I walked into her class, my senior year into her honors pre-calculus class, she was like, you're here? And like she wasn't very happy that I was there. And I kind of mentioned teachers don't start your year like that or your relationship with your students like that. You can think it, but just don't say it out loud to them because it's like, it just sets the tone for the rest of the school year and you don't want that because it's kind of negative. So yeah, those are the teachers that are least influential, but in a way they're still influential because I know that I don't want to be that type of teacher, if that makes sense. Number three, who were your friends? frenemies, rivals. All right, so I had very few friends in school. I was a very shy student. I can say I, I, I believe I was an introvert. <laughs> and I had a lot of anxiety as well. I also, now that I'm an adult, I can honestly look back and say that I did suffer from depression even back in middle school. And yeah, that affected me in a lot of different ways. But I did have few friends that were very caring for me. They cared about me. I had a few frenemies because I was bullied in school. I was bullied mostly in middle school, not so much in high school because I did transfer to another high school away from that group of kids that used to bully me. So there were some people that would be like friendly in front of me, but behind me they were not being friends. They were saying things about me. Like for example, now that I can look back at my middle school yearbooks, I let all these people sign them. And some of the things that they would say were like, oh, you're so sweet and nice, but you need to learn how to dress. Or you're so caring, but your clothes need a, a makeover or something like that. It was just mean. So I didn't fully see it at that time. I do call my middle school years the dark ages because I hated middle school with a passion. And it was mostly because of how those kids made me feel. I had one boy that would say, hey, you're pretty, pretty ugly. And I know that may seem silly right now, but for someone like me that feels things deeply and that I kind of wanted everyone to like me and I didn't understand why people were so mean about how I dressed or the boy telling me that I looked ugly. I mean, I don't understand why they were like that, but as an adult, and I know I'm probably getting ahead of myself because there's a question here. As an adult, I have learned that hurt people hurt people. So, I mean, I'm not making excuses for them, but at least I can now understand that they were doing it because maybe they were hurting in some way and hurting others was their way of getting through it. But yeah, I wanna say I had some really good friends that we kept in touch with for a few years until they moved away and it's hard to keep in touch. And then I think we kind of found each other on Facebook, but you know, it's not the same. Yeah, that's basically my answer to that question. I didn't necessarily have any rivals, because I'm a very easygoing, friendly person. I wasn't out looking for enemies. If people were mean to me, that's just, I guess, things that they were dealing with um, on their own in the inside, and they just projected it outward in that way. But yeah, that's just me back in the day. Number four, what was your favorite or least favorite subject in school? I kind of hinted at this already, but my favorite subject in school was English. And it's funny because English at first wasn't my favorite, favorite subject because I was learning a new language. English is my second language. My first language is Spanish, but I ended up loving English. I ended up loving reading and writing. I also love math, like a lot. The only time that I didn't enjoy math was in high school when I had that teacher that I mentioned that yelled at everybody and wondered why I was in her class my senior year. But yeah, I <laughs> I really enjoy those subjects. My least favorite subject, I would have to say, would be physics because of just the way the teacher taught that class. And that's basically it. I love all the subjects. It's just 
it depends on the teacher and that's why I always refer to that when a student says oh I really don't like this subject I'm like well maybe it's because you haven't had the best experience with it yet and you just need to have that one teacher that will show you how awesome the subject is but that's just the way that I think about that number five what advice would you give to yourself at that age now if we're thinking about middle school because in fourth grade I mean I can't remember so much about my fourth grade year I remember more my middle school years clearly and my high school years more clearly my elementary years not so much except my fifth and sixth grade year a little bit clear because I was in a new place learning a new language and learning the differences in culture at that time but let's just focus on middle school so the advice that I would give myself in middle school would be to not let the words that people say to you get to you as deeply as they do because that is not a reflection of who you are that is not showing your worth that is basically a reflection of whatever it is that that person is dealing with at that time it's not about you it is something that they have to deal with but they don't know how to deal with it so their response is to hurt others in the way maybe they don't mean to do it but maybe that is the way that it comes out so to my younger self don't let those words get to you you are not those words you are not what they say you're worth more than that you are special beyond anything you can even imagine and your beauty is not tied to whatever another person says you're beautiful inside and out and you just have to believe that and know that from within don't expect anybody else to give you validation that that is your truth. So yeah, that is the advice that I will give myself at that age. Number six, what was your personality like at this age? How has your personality changed? Or has, sorry, has your personality changed? So my personality at that age, like I mentioned before, I was introverted, I was very quiet, very shy, I wasn't as social. I have to say that I kind of have improved a little bit on that, but if I were in a crowd of people that I don't know, and I'm by myself, I wouldn't necessarily be the first person to speak. I will wait for others to approach me or ask me a question before I actually engage in conversation. That's just who I am. But at that time in this age, I would have to say that I didn't really like speaking in public in front of people. And now I, I can say that I actually don't mind standing in front of a group of teachers and giving a professional development or sharing information. I actually enjoy doing that right now. But back in the day, not so much because the attention, like everyone looking at me, it like gives me more anxiety. And even now when I get in front of teachers, I get all blotchy. It's like red blotches all over my cheeks and my neck. And people worry like oh my god are you okay I'm like yeah I'm fine it's just this happens sometimes it happens when I'm excited or when I'm angry or when I'm nervous <laughs> but I still get stage fright but not as bad as before and I have to say I was a very friendly and caring person then and I am still a very friendly and caring person now so that hasn't changed all right next question number seven what profession did you want to be at that age did you want to go to college now I definitely knew I wanted to go to college as far as profession I kept changing my mind when I was younger. I maybe at times wanted to be a doctor, then I wanted to be a pediatrician, then I wanted to go into business, so my dad told me to do accounting, and I actually started my college career in accounting. I did my first three years of college as a business major until I changed it to elementary, and I am so glad I did because I found my passion. This is what I was meant to do. I'm in the place that gives me joy, and I'm so happy to have done it. Number eight. What is something you wish you knew then that you know now? And this goes back to the previous question that I talked about giving advice to myself. What I wish I knew then that I know now is that I have value, I have worth, I am beautiful, and I am somebody worthy to be loved. So I wish I knew then what I know now because that is such an important advice to give to my younger self and I wish I would have known that but would I change anything I wouldn't because as hard as it was to go through middle school my dark ages or through anything that happened after that that was hurtful it has made me into the person that I am today so I don't regret any of that and I would not change anything but to answer this question if I could have known then what I know now is that that I do have value I have worth 
I'm worthy to be loved and I am beautiful inside and out no matter what anybody says. Number nine, describe the picture in my thumbnail. So my thumbnail, I couldn't find any pictures of me when I was in fourth grade, but I have a fun one and that's the one that I included in the thumbnail of me. I think I was a toddler. I might have been four or five. I don't know. I am swinging on a swing that my father made that hung from a tree in my grandparents' backyard, and I am wearing an Empire Strikes Back shirt. And that's why today for the video, I'm wearing the Star Wars theme shirt. So look like a princess, teach like a Jedi. I love Star Wars. And that kind of shows you that even back then when I was a young child, I was big into Star Wars or anything in that universe. I am just fascinated by that. And I have my mom to thank for that because she's the one that introduced us to all of that. And both my brothers and myself love Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and anything fantasy and magical and geeky and fun. We're going to the Supercon next week, which is a comic book convention here in South Florida. So that just shows you how much we love all of that. So yeah, it just shows me with my big old smile, swinging in a swing, wearing my Empire Strikes Back shirt, which just shows everything in an essence, in a picture of who I was then and how that person is still me right now. And number 10, if you had a student like yourself at this age, how would you react and connect with them? So if I had a student that was a little bit of an introvert, kind of shy, who was getting bullied, I would do just like my teachers did, especially Ms. Woodruff. I would approach a student, I will have conversations with them, I will try to help them the best way that I could. I mean, not saying that I'm a counselor, but if that came to be, I would refer them to counseling so that they can speak to someone that may be able to help them better. But I will make it my business to let the student know that I really cared about them and I wanted to do whatever was best for them and anything that I could do within my power and reach. And also be more understanding because the student may come to class some days sad with their head down, maybe possibly crying or maybe feeling withdrawn and give that student the space they needed, but also make sure that student knew that they were noticed and that someone else cared for them and that they were not alone in the world. So I think that is something that I would do if I have a student that was like me. And I have to say as a teacher that has been teaching for 17 years, I most definitely have had this type of student in my class. And I hope that that student or those students that I've had that fit in the same kind of characteristic or category that they have felt that I was a teacher that really cared for them and really showed them how special and amazing and wonderful they were and how much they were loved as well. So yeah, uh, that is the tag. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Make sure you also check out the other videos of the three teachers that started this tag, which I'll link in the description box below, along with Janice's video from that one happy teacher that I'll also link in the description box below. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. See you next time.